I trust you can hear me from here and, and well. There are several lessons in our gospel reading today, but the one I want to talk about is difficult to spot because of the English translation of the Greek text of the scriptures. In English, we have one word for the uh, different circumstances for the word love. In Greek, there are several different forms of that word, and they have different meanings. The Greek word agape describes the highest kind of love, a self-giving love, a creative love, a love that is similar to the love of God. But Greek has other words. Another one is philia, to describe ordinary human love, the kind of love that we give to one another. You'll recognize that in the name of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Another would be eros, the sexual or sensual love. Now there's nothing wrong with philia or eros. Human love is a good thing but it does not compare to the exalted status of agape. Now we apply this understanding to today's gospel. Three times in today's gospel, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? That's our English translation. And three times Peter responds, Lord, you know I love you. But what we cannot hear in our English translation is that two different forms are being used. Two different forms of the word love are being used here. Basically, what Jesus is asking of Peter is the highest form of love, agape. But what Peter is offering in return is ordinary human love, philia. To push this translation to catch its nuance, it would go something like this. Jesus asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me with the highest form of love? And Peter responds, Lord, I love you with ordinary human love. Disappointed, Jesus tries a second time. Simon, son of John, do you love me with the highest form of love? Peter responds again, Lord, I love you with ordinary love. By this time, it has become clear to Jesus that although he is asking the highest form of love from God, from Peter, what Peter is offering in return is ordinary human love. This sets the context for the important lesson that's present. Jesus asks a third time, and this time he does not use the word agape. This time he uses Peter's word for love. Philia. So a third time Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me with ordinary human love? And Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that is the way I love you. Then Jesus says, feed my sheep. Now the lesson that emerges from this interplay of Greek vocabulary is that Peter falls short of Jesus' expectation, but Jesus accepts Peter anyway and makes him the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus wanted the highest form of love from Peter, but Peter could only offer a lesser kind of love, and Jesus settles for the second best. He still commissions Peter to be the leader of the early church. Of course, Jesus is showing us the way that God loves us. God always calls us to more. God always calls us to a higher level. But when we fall short, when we cannot reach that highest level, God accepts us anyway. God still commissions us to be his disciples. This is a very comforting message for us as we look at our own inadequacies. But from another perspective, it is a challenging message 
because the greatest commandment of, of the fourth gospel is that we are to love one another as Christ has loved us. And if Christ has loved us, even when we don't use the highest level, of, we don't meet the highest level of his expectation, then Jesus is asking us to love and accept one another in that same way. <clears throat> now think, how much frustration do we have in our lives because the people in our life are not the people we want them to be? How many times have I heard in confession that someone is angry because someone has disappointed their expectations? At this point, I usually cite what I learned from Sally Jesse Raphael many, many years ago when she was still a, a talk radio host. She kept saying to those who would call and say, my daughter doesn't do what I want, my mother is the, my, and complaining about someone, and Sally Jesse Raphael would always respond, there is only one person you can change, and that's this one. The only person I can change is me. If you think that boyfriend or girlfriend will change when you get married, you'd better think again, because the only person I can change is me. Yes, we want our leaders in the church and in the government to be wise and anticipate problems and to solve them before those problems hurt us. But very frequently, those leaders fall short. They get behind the curve and they appear confused and inadequate. We want our spouses to be understanding and attentive, but many times we experience him or her as harsh and preoccupied. We want our boss to be creative and flexible, but many times all that is asked of us is attention to routine de detail. If only our children would be motivated more. If only our parents would be less stubborn. If only our friends would be on time. Oh, how wonderful the world would be if all those were true. But in matters large and small, the people in our life often fall short of who we want them to be. And the message that comes to us from Jesus' action with Peter today is that we are instructed to accept them as the people they are. We are to love them for the goodness that they offer us rather than criticize them for the goodness they lack. Now, this does not mean that Jesus asks us to put up with anything or that we should not hold people accountable for their actions or that we should not challenge people to grow. But it does tell us that when people love us, there is wisdom in accepting that love, even if it is the second best. There was a line from an old film, Sunday, Bloody Sunday, where one lover tells another, I know that I'm not giving you what you want, but I'm giving you what I have. In a way, that is what Peter says to Jesus in today's gospel. I know I'm not giving you the love you want, but I'm giving you the love I have. And Jesus accepts that love and then commissions Peter to feed his sheep. Jesus does that because that is the way Jesus loves us. And that is also the way he wants us to love one another. <clears throat>